Hey guys, hope you're doing okay. Uh, welcome back to Sunday School Online. Last week I had you guys, uh, instead of a lesson, uh, take four days and just pray for VBS. Uh, I hope you guys looked into the scripture that I sent out and um, did the prayers every day. Uh, if not, um, you know, there's still a lot of stuff that you could be praying for. So I just want to encourage you guys to be in the Word and, and to continually pray. Um, uh, first things first, uh, let's... Um, when you see Keith and Kaylee, please tell them congratulations, because if you haven't heard yet, uh, they got engaged. So a uh, big shout out to them and uh, make sure you just show them love and, and just show them that, you know, you're excited for them um, as, as you are. So uh, also we are down to the last three weeks of online Sunday school, uh, including this week. And so uh, only a month away from coming back together and just being in a classroom together and just learning more about God. And so um, let's try to hang in there with online Sunday school and finish out strong, okay? So August 16th is the date that we're shooting for. So August 16th is the day that we come back. And obviously uh, you should go with whatever your parents are most comfortable with in terms of safety and, and uh, you know, quarantine and stuff like that. Uh, but I would love it if you guys were there. Uh, just to get to hang out with you guys again in a, in a Sunday school capacity. And uh, most importantly, your teachers are really excited to see you back as well, I'm sure. Um, so without anything else, let's, um, let's head back, let's head right into the lesson. Uh, for the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about Christian community, right? What it means to be a community, why it's so important, and, and what God expects us to, to be in a part of that community, right? Well, today I, I want to talk about kind of um, uh, not the pros and you know, not the good benefits of it, but, you know, just embracing what it means um, to be a community and, you know, what that entails, right? And, um, and more than anything else, um, it's about unification, right? And so we talked about how uh, a body of Christ is like an actual physical body where all the parts have to work together. Um, and for that to happen, it has to be unified, right? It has to be under uh, one brain. It has to be under uh, one control, right? And that's Jesus. And, and for us to function and thrive as a, as a body, uh, we all have to be listening and obeying what he has for us, but also we have to be doing it together. Right? Um, so let's, uh, let's think about what the word community means, right? Um, we've talked about it for the past couple of weeks, but really think about what community means, right? Um, it, it's defined as a feeling of fellowship with others as a result of sharing common uh, attributes, attitudes, interests, or goals, right? And so God has always intended us to be a part of a community that was united under the good news of Jesus, right? And so we have to understand the importance of community in the church. The, de the church wasn't designed for individuals or it wasn't in, uh, designed to be a social club where people, you know, sit and judge others, right? <clears throat> Instead, it was, it was supposed to be a place where uh, fellowship and um, where other people can come together and it share in a common belief of Jesus and, and a common uh, goal in sharing the gospel. Right? And so Bible, the Bible talks about the importance of community all over, right? Um, we're going to look at the book of Ephesians uh, to kind of learn a little more about that um, and what it means to, you know, to, to be unified under a community. Um, but first, I want to kind of talk about the, the uh, verse in Acts chapter 2 that we've been hitting on, right? So if you have your Bibles, great. Turn to Acts chapter 2. If not, make sure you get your Bible out. Uh, pause the video if you have to, right? So Acts chapter 2 goes like this. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. And so, um, you know, we have to think about the foundation of the biblical definition of community that they, that they discuss um, from a few lessons ago, right? And so early believers in Jesus um, were the minority, right, in their cities and towns. So there, there wasn't a whole lot of them, and they, there was only a few of them that came together, right? They needed to rely on one another, and they needed one another to accomplish uh, the great commission that Jesus had left for them. And so they didn't believe that they only uh, had all things in common, but they shared all things with each other. 
Um, in Acts chapter 4, verses 32 and 33, it says, Now the full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. Um, so Christians back then were, were closer than families, right? They shared everything with one another, and they were willing to sacrifice their own wants and their own needs uh, for each other. And so this passage shows the foundation for the true Christian community that can be found in the gospel. They understood that community amongst Christ followers was rooted in sacrificial and, and selfless love that Jesus showed to all believers on the cross. So the needs of the, the whole outweigh the needs of the individual. Um, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 4. This is where I wanted to talk to you guys today. Uh, verses 1 through 6, it says, I, therefore, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling of which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and Father of all, who is over all, and through all, and in all. Um, so Paul is urging Christians um, to read this letter and be unified um, in a way that they walk in a manner worthy of the calling uh, to which they have been called. Right? And so what that means is he wants, to, he wants them to understand that, um, that the basis of unity, that everything that's, that they're based on, that, 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 that's built on top of it, is, uh, is the gospel, right? And that's what we've been called to. And so Paul emphasizes that we should walk in unity with one another, not because we all, all, all agree on every single detail of church life, um, but because that's what we've been called to is in a way of walking according to our calling. And so we walk in unity because the gospel calling that we have our own lives. And so the gospel calls us, sorry, the gospel has a calling on our own lives and we walk together in unity of that. And so in, as Christians, we're no longer, you know, uh, motivated to live for ourselves, but for others, uh, just like Jesus did. And so the basis, the, the foundation of maintaining unity in church is the sacrificial love of Jesus and the message of the good news that we have been forgiven. And so everything that we do, everything that we're unified in are those two things right there. Um, and so this is the why, right? Like, this is the reason that we are unified. And so let's uh, let's finish this out, all right? Uh, let's go back to verses 2 and 3, and let's look at what the, the qualities that Paul is calling us to are, right? Um, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing in one another in love, uh, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. Right? Um, and so each of these words um, mean different things in the community, right? Uh, they promote unity uh, because they all have different parts to it, right? Humility and gentleness, right? That kind of speaks for itself. Jesus called us to be humble. That uh, And being humble isn't only about lowering yourself, but it's also about raising others up. Right? To be gentle, right? Because people will listen to you if you're gentle. And it's much easier to, to work together, right? with patience because people aren't going to be doing uh, everything that you agree with, right? You're not going to agree with everything that someone does and they're not going to agree with everything that you do. And so we need to be patient with one another, right? To bear another uh, with one another in love, right? We have to maintain the unity uh, of the spirit and the bond of peace, right? That should be what our goals are. Um, so Paul knew that the unity, that true unity, couldn't be found uh, in the holiness of church members. So that true unity that Paul is talking about isn't found uh, in your experiences. It's not found in your character, your personality. It's not found in my character and personality and experiences, right? Neither could be uh, found in the the, uh, the ability to agree on all things, right? Because there are things that I agree with that you don't and vice versa, right? But instead, Paul 
draws the attention of the reader to the qualities that Jesus emphasized during his time on earth. And so there are certain things that we may disagree on, but the one thing that we agree on um, is that Jesus came and led a, a perfect, blameless life. Right? And for us to seek holiness is to, uh, to imitate and emulate what he did. And so that is what our unity is based on. He, Jesus was gentle and humble, right? He was patient and loving. And, and these qualities and characteristics are um, all things that we believers should be trying to, to replicate in the community uh, because those things are things that produce unity. Okay? And so let's read uh, verses 4 and six, four through 6. Sorry. So there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, and the Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. Um, so the foundational truth that Paul gives us here is that, um, that we believe in God in three persons, right? The, the Father, Spirit, and Son. We believe that Jesus Christ is our Savior, and we believe in the one faith, the one true faith that is found through him, uh, and that we are baptized in the Spirit, uh, in the one Spirit, right? And so, why do you think Paul listed these truths instead of, uh, of things that, you know, of preferences of worship or like other factors uh, of, of life? And, and I think the reason for that is that these are foundational beliefs of Christian faith, right? Worship styles and other minor preferences can change. They're important to consider, but they're not reasons why you should uh, separate and, and disunify, right? Um, and so the, in the gospel of Jesus, um, you know, and, and the affirmation of one faith are the most important beliefs in the Christian church. So why do you think the church is so often divided? you know, about trivial disputes and arguments. And, and the reason I think that is, is because the church becomes more about us than about Jesus. Right? It becomes more about what I want than what God wants. It becomes more about what I have to offer than what the good news, what the gospel of Jesus has to offer. And that is why there's so much disunity in churches. And so in today's society, the church has become kind of like a, a religious country club, okay? So it's a place where a lot of people come together to, to see friends and, and to learn new things. Uh, but that's not what God intended the church to be. Like, these are all important things, um, but it was never meant to be distracted by these tiny arguments, that these small things that cause fights, but instead a place where we sacrificially and lovingly serve one another, um, not because we're good people, but because it's a testimony of Jesus' sacrificial and selfless love um, on the cross. And so when we follow the principles given by the Apostle Paul in Ephesians 4, we can be unified with the entire church in order to accomplish the mission of spreading the gospel to the world. And so there's always going to be uh, disagreements in church, though, right? Because we're all individual people. We're all from different backgrounds, uh, different homes, different, uh, different, you know, whatever. Um, and it could be really easy for teenagers to even get caught up in the uh, details of church life and become distracted. Um, we can become disillusioned with tra traditions and beliefs, right, that want us to, uh, to cause us to challenge um, our fellow believers. Because haven't you ever thought, why are they still doing that? You know, like what's the point of that? Isn't that kind of stupid? You know, uh, and it, you know we've all had these thoughts, and they're not necessarily good thoughts, but they're, they're, they're thoughts that we've had. Um, but as we can see in the book of Acts and in the book of Ephesians, the unity of church of the churches is crucial for um, accomplishing our mission. Right? We can't spread the gospel. We can't do all those great things. Uh, without the church. Right? And I'm not talking about the building, I'm talking about uh, what the lifestyle that we're called to is, right? Um, when we live selflessly and sacrificially as Jesus did, we can promote unity and look past the differences in order to accomplish our goal to spread the gospel across the globe. And so I, I really do want to encourage you guys, as you become more involved in church, um, 
to, to focus on the big picture, right? Not those little things that, that cause squabbles and, and arguments, but the big picture being, you know, Jesus' selfless love, right, and the sacrifice that he made. And when we focus on those things, it becomes a lot easier for us to do those things, right? It's so much easier for us to love because he loved us first. It's so much easier for us to sacrifice because he sacrificed first. And so I hope that you keep that in mind um, and that you continue to just uh, grow in him uh, with these things in mind. And, and I truly hope that you guys start understanding the value of the church um, and what it, uh, what it provides and what we need to provide. Right? Um, so I'll, uh, I'll see you guys hopefully today during service, if not, um, maybe Thursday or next Sunday, right? Uh, thanks so much for, uh, for tuning in, and um, I'll see you guys later, okay?